That's not bad. That countdown really works. I should try that at the dinner table at, you know, when my kids were growing up, right? Can't. No, anyway. Good to see you. Welcome. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, and that is the, the word of the day. We can go, all go home now, right? <laughs> Uh, no, that is, uh, that is a, uh, the word of the day, and it's worth repeating, and we celebrate and give thanks uh, for the glory of this day that is Easter, the chance to be together, to worship in this place, the gift of technology that allows us to worship uh, together online. Welcome if you're joining us, wherever you may be joining us from, whether it's live this morning or whether it's later in the day, welcome. Uh, we encourage you, if you found the worship to be helpful or, or uh, a blessing today, share the link. It's, uh, it's never been easier to invite somebody to church than to just forward that link to somebody and uh, say, hey, this is my church, check it out. Um, uh, anyway, um, we encourage you to do that. Well, we have guests today, and uh, as uh, on this, this holy day, we'll have a chance to, to greet one another a little bit later in our worship, and I uh, look forward to that uh, for sure. Uh, but as we've gathered, let's just take a moment to, to just center our hearts, uh, center our hearts in gratitude uh, for the day, center our hearts in joy of the day, uh, center our hearts in this time, in this place you have chosen to attend. Now I invite you to be present, hmm? present to and with in the, in the presence of the living God, present to and with one another realizing this act of worship is not just an individual vertical act it's not just me and God it's we it's a gift that we share many hands have gone into uh, to preparing and celebrating the joys of this day some of you have been here in worship already today and we give thanks for all these things let's be present to and for and with one another amidst the holy giving thanks for the, the joy of this day. Breathe in the spirit of the living God. Let's worship. stand as you are comfortable and join me in the call to worship. <clears throat> the tomb is dark, but empty. The, one we are looking for <clears throat> the stone has been rolled away. <clears throat> the burial clothes are put aside. Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed. Let us worship our risen Savior. 
and let us continue worshiping in song with Christ the Lord is risen today, number 302, verses 1, 2, and 3. Hear me? Yeah, now it's on. Christ is risen. We repeat our Easter shouts of surprise and joy again and again for news of your victory over powers of death and evil is news so startling, so amazing, so different from the news that bombards us day by day beyond our comprehension. You startle us again and again with resurrection life, bringing grace and hope and joy. You in your risen power are shaping all our days. And so we praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Before you sit down, why don't you take a moment and greet those around you. Greet, uh, introduce yourself to somebody. Wish somebody happy Easter this morning. All right, very good. You may be seated. You may be seated. You know, some churches, uh, maybe you've been to a church where they, uh, they say they have guests stand up, you know, and they even have people in the congregation, they're like hawks. They're like, you're a guest, you stand up. You know, they like make sure they, there's no escaping it. We don't do that. Uh, years ago, I thought I was being cute. And what I would say is I'd say, if you're a member or regular attender, would you please stand up? And then all the guests are left. They're sitting around looking like this. 
We're not doing that either. Uh, if you're a guest, we're glad you're here. I uh, hope you uh, find a, a connection uh, here, uh, and maybe you came with a neighbor or a friend. You get an extra gold star for inviting somebody to church today. Uh, God bless you, and, and thank you. Uh, if and when you're ready to let us know a little bit about yourself as a guest, we invite you to do this. We invite you to fill these out and put that in the offering plate. And tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, when you're ready for us to contact you, maybe you'll give us an email address. When you're ready uh, for us to send you uh, something in the mail, maybe you'll give us your, uh, your mailing address. Um, uh, some of you are still, um, maybe your winter residents, you've only given us your address in Indiana. When you're ready to get your address here in, in, in Green Valley, you can give us that too. Uh, wherever you find yourself in life's journey, uh, let us know. Help us connect with you. Get you connected with others here along life's journey. Uh, prayers, no matter how many prayers you have or what they are, there's no prayer too big or too small. Prayers here on the, the, this, this sheet as well. If you want to know about ministries that are happening here in the life of the church, fill these out. Uh, fill one out, two out, three out, five out. You are uh, not signing up for anything. You're not committing. Uh, but if you're curious, say, hey, yeah, I want to know a little more about this, uh, this uh, being an usher or a greeter or being in the handbell choir, whatever it may be. You let us know. Uh, we'll connect with you, help you get connected uh, as well. At the top here are a couple of volunteer opportunities, which are sign-ups. Uh, we don't require you to sign up for Memory Cafe, uh, but we request uh, your RSVP. And, uh, you know, the, we have a great property here, um, most of which is taken care of. Uh, by volunteers that uh, come and just do the just basic landscaping. You want to be a part of that team? Let us know. We'll plug you in as well. Many of the different ministries that are happening are listed here in the bulletin. I'm not going to read those to you. Uh, I do want to just encourage you uh, to look those over. And uh, we're grateful for all the ways that we can connect and love and serve and grow together as the body of Christ. I was asked to remind you that you, uh, they're wrapping up the United Methodist Women Virtual Thrift, uh, which you have been very faithful and very generous, but if you were still waiting or had not yet made a gift uh, for those missional uh, uh, outreaches that, that the, the United Methodist Women have done, you're still welcome to do that. They're trying to wrap that up, okay? Wow. Um, and finally, uh, just a great big thank you uh, to you uh, that you have provided the beautiful lilies here. Um, I don't know how many of you remember the lilies last year. Uh, the lilies were still waiting. They were waiting for Easter last year. They, they said, yeah, it's not Easter yet. They were all green and they were all closed. It was, <laughs> there really was this sort of like hopelessness. They were just still waiting. we are waiting to cry, Christ is risen. But uh, we're about 80% this year. This is much better. So uh, you're welcome to take those lilies, uh, those of you who uh, you gave lilies in honor and memory of folks. Take it home, put it in the ground. Take, uh, they do really great here. Um, uh, maybe take it to a neighbor or a friend. Uh, it'd be a, just a fine uh, gift as well. Um, any that you leave, uh, we will do our best to make homes for, but you'll, you'll see them uh, throughout the week as you come to the church. They'll be here as well. So uh, anyway. Um, grateful uh, for this day and all that has uh, gone into this day. I do need to offer, I do see some of you that have been here since 5 a.m. this morning. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing some of you. Um, my great big thanks to you for uh, making the sunrise, being a part of the sunrise worship. My great big thanks to you for making breakfast successful uh, and for us sharing the fellowship together. So you all know who you are. I'm not going to make anybody stand up, but a great big uh, thank you, especially to those uh, who came together to make uh, breakfast uh, happen. God bless you, and uh, thank you. All right, well, with that, let's, uh, um, one thing I do like to do and say is um, uh, that I hope that these ministries you see here aren't just for your information, but I do hope that they can shape your prayers, Right? The number one way we say we uphold the church is when we ask people to join the church, we say, say, do you promise to uphold the church by your prayers? Right. If you're a member here, you answered that question. And every time we've received a member, we've asked that question. Do you uphold the church by your prayers? One of the ways we can pray for the church, pray for our ministries. Right. Pray for the leaders. Pray for these places that are they're creating more space for people to get connected as they come to Green Valley. And find a, a, a new home and a new place. Pray for our ministries and every one of our leaders 
most of which, almost all of which, are, are, are unpaid leaders. So be in prayer for those today and each day. Well, we're going to have a prayer of confession, and uh, after our words of assurance, I am going to let us have a time of silent prayer. It's not listed there, but uh, no, my, my mic is not off, but after the words of assurance, it will be a time of silent prayer before we have our Easter prayer. So let's give our hearts now to God as we pray together. Gracious and patient God, we come before you with so many things which weigh us down. We would like an easy faith to look within ourselves to identify those many ways in which we have forsaken you. But faith is never easy. It requires our very souls. Forgive us, God, for all those things which we have neglected to do that would have someone else to be closer to you. Heal our hearts from the wounds which have been inflicted upon us by the anger and misunderstandings which occur in relationships. Prepare our lives to be of service to you. In silence we wait. We long for your presence and your healing touch. Amen. God is merciful. God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Feel the healing, loving power of God in your lives, for it is given to you through Jesus Christ. Amen. When everything was dark, and it seemed that the sun would never shine again, your love broke through. Your love was too strong, too wide, too deep for death to hold. The spark, the sparks cast by your love dance and spread and burst forth with resurrection light. Gracious God, we praise you for the light of the new life made possible through Jesus. We praise you for the light of the new life that shone on the first witnesses of resurrection. We praise you for the light of new life that continues to shine in our hearts today. We pray that the Easter light of life, hope and joy will live in us each day and that we will be bearers of that light. For those, O oh God, that continue to be in the dark places of despair and grief and isolation, for those who continue to be in the dark places of famine and war, Lord, may those, your people, be bearers of light wherever they may be. May they be the ones that cast the seeds and, 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 and to share your living light where the darkness feels endless. Lord, have mercy when we have carried with us that your living light and held it deep in our pockets. Lord, may we be bearers of the light today and always. Hear us, O oh God, as we offer this prayer and as we offer this prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our first reading from God's Holy Word is found in Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace in Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin through his name. The word of God for the people of God.
Our Gospel reading is from John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen cloths lying there but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, the one who reached the tomb first, also went in and saw and believed. For as yet, they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary, Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, Tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. God. Now I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward for a presentation of our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. You know, everything we do is worship, right? Worship as a response to God. Our songs, a response to God. Our prayers, a response to God. Our gathering, a response to God. Every element is a response to God. May our offering be an expression of our hearts, a response uh, to God. Uh, Lord, receive these our gifts, our tithes, our offerings. May they bring glory to your name as we uh, seek to continue to do your work of your church here in Green Valley and around uh, the world. In Jesus' name, amen.
right. Well, let's uh, let's pray. God, thanks uh, for this day, for the very gift of Easter and every gift that we share this day for each uh, gathering, for the the meals that we have shared and will share, for the gift of the music that we share, for the memories that uh, gather around this day. But above all, we give you thanks for the gift of your Son and for the hope of resurrection uh, that we celebrate this day. Lord, hear us now and and allow us to hear you speak a word through me not because of me as one preacher said uh, today lord help me uh, don't let me mess this up lord uh, our ears our hearts our minds are open we're listening amen one of the things i love to do when i read uh, scripture um and this is actually, uh, it's, it's actually a method. I mean, I, I, I learned this in my Christian ed class uh, in seminary, is to actually put yourself into the text, right? As imagine you're actually a character in the text. Uh, it's too easy for us to just kind of like hold up the Bible and look like that was then and there and, for, and them there. But the truth is, is that, you know, sometimes we hold it up like a mirror. We might just see ourselves. And in fact, we might be able to relate to the very moment like, so let's imagine for a moment, there we are, while it's still dark. We're, we're Mary, and we, we run to the tomb uh, on the third day, planned as we did to go care for the body, to anoint the body, to care for my one, the, my, my, Jesus, my master, my friend. And there, the one whom the emotions are still raw within me, right? I mean, I just saw this horrendous act on Friday of him dying on a cross and I go to the tomb while it was still dark and it's the tomb is empty I mean uh, if I'm in that text right I can I can already feel my heart but like my pulse is up my my heart starts to beat I begin to run I'm panting as I'm running to go to tell the others and and I can't even get the words out I mean I could I I can see what I would be like. And there I say, come on, let's go. You've got to see what's happening. And they run, and, and they're running together. And then one of the other disciples outruns everybody, and he gets there. And they look, and only to find cloths there. Wow. And then the men, in typical men fashion, one of them, it says the text, gets it. Like, one of them uh, believed, but the other one, didn't understand and so then they just kind of shrugged their shoulders and went back to where their house their house was like they just okay and they just went back the text says where back to where they were staying okay doesn't indicate any emotion doesn't indicate any questions doesn't indicate any questions it's kind of, or conversation it's kind of like I, I spend some time on the phone with my mother and my wife says well what'd you talk about I don't know we just talk just stuff no, I mean, what'd she have to say? Well, you know, stuff, you know. There they are. It's, it's two men. And uh, I mean, I don't know about you, but I would probably have a few questions, wouldn't you? You think Mary rolled that stone away? Not a chance, pal. Uh, well, well, who then? Who then? You don't think somebody actually took Jesus' body, do you? And besides, if they did... Why would they bother to unwrap his body? I mean, that's, I mean, come on, that, I mean, after the way he died, I mean, what do you, why would they do that? Don't you think it's a little bit strange? Huh. But in stereotypical fashion, they simply shrug their shoulders and they go back to where they were staying. Oh, they just go back. The stone has been rolled away and yet they just go back. You know, that's actually kind of normal. If you've ever, uh, and I'm not just saying just for men, but for anybody, if you've ever experienced a traumatic event or a life situation, we really want to just go back to normal, right? I wish things, you know, after the passing of a loved one and where our brain and our mind and our spirit is scrambling and it hurts so much, I just wanted to go back to normal. Uh, after an event and you say, you know what, I wish I could just be back home in, warm in my bed, right? I want to go back to my mama's, right? 
if I could only go back to that safe and comfort, comfortable place. You know, even the addict will go back to the substance of choice and the, abuser will go, the abused will go back to the abuser as this sense of just getting back to this homeostasis. I, I can't unpack that entirely in the moment. But we know it's a biblical reality, too, because uh, the Israelites, uh, when they were freed uh, from Pharaoh's oppression, right? Uh, We always watch the Ten Commandments. Even if my kids aren't around, we grew up watching watching Ten Commandments. We'd eat flatbread and hummus and eat fish sticks around Easter. That's just kind of what we would do. And so we did it again last night, right? And there it was about our three into the into the movie the Israelites have been freed and I was and there it was again and they said why don't we go back to Egypt (laughs) that's what they said this happens in the book of Numbers if you wanted to do your little biblical uh, study in the book of Numbers it's they've been wandering about a year they're tired they're weary they're hungry and uh And this has been a horrific journey. And they say, why don't we just appoint us a new leader instead of Moses and go back? At least, I mean, we'll be slaves, but we'll at least know where our next meal's coming from. They wanted to go back. Even though they were free. Even though the stone of slavery had been rolled away. Even though they had come out of that the darkness and the tomb of slavery that had held them for hundreds of years, for generations, they still said, you know, let's go back. No. No going back. The stone is rolled away. This past week, I went to Mexico uh, on Monday. What better, what, what better way to start Holy Week than to go to Mexico? And if you've not gone on a cross-border tr- tour, we had one that was just for our church. There were 14 of us that went. And we, um, I think I've gone a half dozen times in the last two and a half years. And every time I go, I hear new stories and I'm reminded and it sticks more closely to me. There we went, and uh, one of the places we visited was called Arsobo. Arsobo, you want to pull up that first picture for me? A-R-S-O-B-O, Arizona Southern Border. I can't give you their entire story, but what that Arsobo stands for, it's, it's a cooperative work between uh, a non-government organization or an NGO in Mexico. We call them nonprofits in the United States and with the University of Arizona and others. This magnificent non-governmental organization, Arsobo, uh, is one that provides prosthesis, prosthetics, uh, and prosthetics for people. Wheelchairs specifically, uh, prosthesis, arms and legs, as well as hearing aids. The stories there are magnificent. We learned that many of, of the, the persons who come there had created, manufactured, engineered, if you will, these homemade prosthesis. Some made out of, uh, out of the stump of a tree, others made out of PVC pipe, others made out of two by fours. It is just amazing. There was one that it was like the bottom half of a crutch that had just been cut off and, and they adhered a foot to the bottom of the crutch and then they just strap it on with a belt. I mean, it was just astounding. But uh, uh, Kiko, who was the man in that first picture, uh, or, uh, or, or Francisco Trujillo, who's the executive director, was telling us stories about people who had come uh, or connected with our Sobo. You see, people in Mexico who uh, are either born with a disability or experience a tragic accident are going to be left to do nothing but become a beggar in the street. They're not going to have the, the support that they, they need and, the, and they, they probably don't have the financial resources in the private sector to go get the medical care they need to get a prosthesis. And so these prosthesis uh, that would be, I mean, hearing aids, many of you have hearing aids. I've heard you say how much you spend on them. They can do hearing aids for $140. Prosthesis that would cost thousands of dollars, they do for a couple hundred dollars. And if people can't pay, they find sponsors. The stories are of people, and I heard him say this 
this time more than any other, that of people who had come who had experienced tragic accidents, like one who had ridden the train northward as an immigrant, fallen off the train, and lost their, le- their leg. They called that train the beast. As they rode the beast northward, they fell and they lost a leg. That person was trying to find a, 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 better, a better life, now hopeless, hurt, They were to the point of suicide, he said. Nothing left to live for. Or the man who was hurt in a tragic uh, accident, uh, fallen off a, a combine, or the one who lost his leg in a car accident who could no longer provide for his family, nothing to live for. Now, with the help provided by Arsobo, they had a new life. The stone of hopelessness had been rolled away. The stone of despair had been rolled away. The stone of this, of this darkness, that dark place of wanting to take one's own life, rolled away. They now have something to live for. Many of you have your own stories where the stone has been rolled away and you now have life. You, you have been in that dark place. And some of you may say that I feel like I still am in that dark place. Well, let me tell you, the stone is and will and can be rolled away and is rolled away with the hope of Easter. But too many still yet have the stones of injustice that have yet to be rolled away. The stones of pain, (coughs) stones of oppression, stones of racism in the world we live in, stones of hate against LGBTQ persons. Those stones yet need to be rolled away in so many places. The stones, too many, yet remain. That's the thing about this event, this rolling away of the stone, that, that, that is, that's why we, we don't just simply look at it like through a window that's so far away then and there, but maybe we hold it up as a mirror and say, oh, we are in this. It's not a one and done event that it just happened. The stones continue to be rolled away. And I believe we as the body of Christ hear this story differently than the people did in that very first day. And here's how. I believe that we as the body of Christ are called to be stone rollers. That we are called to be rollers of stones, dear friends. To roll away stones of injustice and oppression and hate and homophobia. There was another stone in Scripture that was rolled away. And it was also there in the Gospel of John. It's the story of Lazarus, one of my very favorite stories in Scripture. Probably because I visited the site in Bethany that was actually, it's a lot of the sites in the Holy Land, they'll say, this is noted as the, historically, we, we, we think it's the tomb of Lazarus, or we think it's the, the, this site or that site. It was a cold, dark tomb. And we remember that in that story, at the tomb of Lazarus, all kinds of things are going on. They call out to Jesus. Jesus doesn't reply in the time and the way that they think he should. My brother's sick. Jesus, hurry up. My brother's sick. Jesus, hurry up. And anyway, he ends up dying. And Jesus comes. It's, like, it's some days later. And Jesus says this. He says to the villagers, to the gatherers, to the people, roll away the stone. Jesus doesn't roll away the stone. Jesus says to the people, you roll away the stone. And then Jesus says, unbind him and let him go. But I believe those words are not only words that were said then and there, but those are words that we are charged to use as well. Unbind him. Let him go. Rise up. Where is the stone that Jesus is calling you to roll away? What is that stone that Jesus is calling you to roll away? The stone of bitterness or hatred or racism. What, where, and what is that stone that you're being called to to roll away? 
because he empowers us to claim our voices. Get up, rise up, have life. And don't ever go back. (laughs) And don't ever go back, for Christ has risen, and so you can rise too. The very first words in this text, I, I, I was just, it grabbed me today, just today. It says, while it was still dark, while it was still dark, that's where this work begins. This work of Easter, it still be, it begins in the dark, and that's where we're called to go, to be rollers of stones. Rise up, O people of God. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. We're going to sing. Uh, we're going to get our hallelujahs in today. Uh, you know, uh, if you were here a few weeks ago, I said, you know, we don't, we don't sing hallelujahs during Lent, but that is kind of a traditional thing in the church. But when uh, Easter comes, we bring all the hallelujahs. And so uh, we're going to stand. We're going to sing this closing hymn of uh, the church. Uh, the strife is o'er. It's number 306 in the hymnal. Uh, and uh, we'll sing two verses or words will be on the screen. Let's sing together. Again, happy Easter. It's been a good and a joyful thing to be together and to share in uh, this day, whatever is in store, wherever you may be headed. Uh, we hope that you have a, a blessed, blessed day. Uh, go forth. Uh, keep your eyes upon Jesus. Remember, no crisis lasts forever. And remember, God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. Go in peace. Happy Easter. Hi. Hi.